So welcome in the sharing on the base of Gurudev's mercy, the mercy of Dhanja Tattva, and on the base of Sri Chaitanya Charit Amrita, written by Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So we are still in Adi Lila, chapter 4, but we will finish this chapter today, I guess. Let's see how time will flow. So we heard in Adi Lila that even a foolish child can understand Prachendanandana through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. And we heard about the plans Krishna made to appear and the reasons why he wants to appear. And we also heard how we can understand this whole topic and how we foolish children can understand Rajananandana. We heard about Radharani and her difference, different expansions. We heard about Sarva Lakshmi, the representation of the six opulences of Krishna. We heard about Savakanti, how she is fulfilling all the desires who Krishna doesn't even know himself that he has. And we heard a description of Radharani's love and that her love is 10 million times bigger in taste than Krishna can taste. And that's why he wants to come. So today we will conclude this chapter 4 and we will read now from text number 202. Here it is described what kind of love the Manjuris have, what kind of love pure devotees have, what pureness this love has. So the example is given here, Sri Daruka did not relish his ecstatic feelings of love, for they caused his limbs to become stunned and thus obstructed his service of fanning Lord Krishna. That's one example given here. So the devotee may have ecstasies in his seva, and these ecstasies may be an obstruction in his seva, and then he don't like this. And he rather wouldn't have any ecstasies, but going on with his seva. This is describing heart of a devotee. But the description is going further. It's going more up. In the next verse, 203, there is written, The lotus-eyed Radha Rani powerfully condemned the ecstatic love that caused a flow of tears that hindered her the sight of Govinda. So she could not see Govinda because of her tears and she powerfully condemned this ecstatic love. So this is the nature of pure devotion. 
no interest for self-satisfaction, for any enjoyment, not even on the transcendental platform, what to speak of material platform, not even on the transcendental platform. Don't let me enjoy, let me just do the seva. And this is one reason why mantras, they are steady in their seva. No matter what bhavas are around them and in them, they are steady in their seva. This is astonishing, most astonishing. Text number 204. Furthermore, pure devotees never forsake the loving service of Lord Krishna to aspire for their own personal pleasure through the five kinds of liberation. Dharma Artha Kama Moksha is out. Everything gone. Pure devotees don't even consider to have any kind of this liberations. You know, there are different kinds of liberations. You can go in Brahman or you can go and live be on, on Vaikuntha planets, you can, he, you can have actually a, a godly existence, like God, you know, on the level of his eyes, we are practically on the same level. You are God, I am God. <laughs> we are all gods. So there are different kind of liberations you may have. This is all the mercy we have to understand this is all the mercy because the jivas, they have this wish. The Lord is actually giving this possibility that they may live like they want. Because a loving father will try to give the children what they want, right? But in the material world, a loving father may not have the possibilities to fulfill all the wishes. But we are talking here about Krishna. He has. He has all abilities. But of course, he wants to give the best. So if somebody asking for liberation, he is not very clever. And sometimes Krishna also says, I will not fulfill their wishes. If they are in, in practical seva, in bhakti yoga, why I should fulfill them the wish in the same time they have for material things? Why I should? This wouldn't be very clever. It would obstruct their seva. So then I will not fulfill them. He will inspire us more to serve and more to climb up on the ladder of bhakti to pure bhakti, to brahma bhakti. So he's acting like a loving father. Srila Prabhupada writes in his purport, a pure devotee of Krishna who loves him exclusively will flatly refuse to accept any sort of liberation. Any sort. 
beginning from merging in the body of the Lord and extending to the other varieties of liberation, such as equality of form, opulence, or abode and the opulence of living near the Lord. So all these kind of liberations are not very interesting for someone who get one drop of pure love, even one drop. Text 205, just as the celestial waters of the Ganges flow unobstructed into the ocean, so when my devotees simply hear of me, their minds come to me, who resides in the hearts of all. Just as the celestial waters of the Ganga flows unobstructed into the ocean, so when my devotees simply hear of me, their minds come to me. Actually, if we see it deeper, we can find a connection to Radharani, because this is exactly how Radharani's mind is working. When she thinks about him, automatically everything is flowing in this direction. So Radharani is always in the flow, unobstructed. Nobody can give any hindrance, nothing, no way. Her mind is always flowing unobstructed into the ocean of rasa. When we hear explanations of pure devotee, we always can remember that who is the purest devotee. In this way, maybe it gets even sweeter to hear about devotees. I mean, it's already sweet, very sweet to hear about devotees, but to hear about the greatest devotee, it's even more sweet. It's the sweetest of all sweetness. And Radharani, she is the greatest and purest devotee. That's why her name is Radhika, which comes from the root words of A Radhika, which is mentioned in Bhagavatam. So we may have this connection that she is the highest possible state of devotion. So when we hear about these characteristics, we may always remember her. Text number 206. These are the characteristics of transcendental loving service to Purushottama the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is causeless and it cannot be obstructed in any way. So if we hear, hear about Supreme Personality of Godhead, we may think, yeah, it's about God. But actually, when Prabhupada is stating this, he wants to say the Supreme personality of Godhead has nothing to do with the, uh, the seva of being God. He is just freely enjoying with Radharani. 
This is the supreme. Otherwise, how you can say he is supreme? Supreme personality of Godhead. If he has duties of God, he is not supreme. <laughs> he is supreme when he is enjoying with Radharani. Then he is supreme. Yes. Because then he is just enjoying love. Playing. That's supreme. If he is exchanging the highest possible form of love in different kind of rasas, this is supreme. Because his supremacy is coming out of the fact that he wants to serve his guru, Sri Radhe, the guru of the highest possible love. From this, his supremacy is actually arising from this fact. Dehi Pada Palavam Udaram. He is praying to Radharani, please give me your what is called prayer? generous, your generous lotus feet. This makes him spring. So this is meant here when Prabhupada is telling or also other devotees are telling the supreme personality of Godhead. For people who are in God consciousness it means something else, but for us it means we are talking about the supreme. Text 207 My devotees do not accept Salokya, Shashti, Sarupya, Samipya or Oneness with me. Even if I offer these liberations in preference to serving me. Because who is a devotee? What means devoted? Means devoted that I am regularly baking bread for you, if I like or not, I'm just doing it. Is this devoted? Or is devoted, I give my heart, I love you, I will do it for you because I love to do it. And if I cannot do it, I will miss it. Microfono chiuso, Maduria. So this is the question. What means to serve out of love? Text 208. My devotees, having fulfilled their desires by serving me, do not accept the four kinds of salvation that are easily earned, easily earned by such service. This is another example how merciful actually how merciful the Lord is. He can easily give liberation if you just do a little seva. He's so 
thankful. He is so thankful. Why is that? Because we heard the represent of the six opulences is Sarva Lakshmi. So because of the sweet nature of Radha, the sweet nature of Krishna is there. Radharani is the guru and a good disciple is like the guru, right? That's why he is so lovely. We may consider that. His good qualities, they have a source. Even in the material world, I know, good qualities are not in me. They were never. I had all bad qualities. But through the association of loving persons like my wife, I get more and more, slowly, better qualities. Character is improving. So if this is even in our case like that, then we can see that it's also in Krishna's case like that. All good qualities are coming from Radha. That's why she can make him crazy. Otherwise, how she could make him crazy if this would be in his own possessions? Not possible. Only someone who is more qualified than you can make you crazy in love, right? So that's why it's very clear what to speak of such salvations. They are just like dust. Maybe not even dust in comparison with gold. So next verse, 209, the natural love of the gopis is devoid of any trace of lust. It is faultless, bright and pure, like molten gold. I don't know if any one of you have ever seen molten gold, when gold is molten. It's very hot, it's very shiny. And on the top is all impurity of the gold, it's just coming out, like when you cook butter. Then everything is coming up, the foam you put away, then at one point it's gold. And but gold is even more shining, bright. It's Radharani's luster. She is actually like that. She's shining like molten gold. Wonderfully bright shining. Completely clean, no spots, nothing. Purest of the pure. The gopis are the helpers, teachers, friends, wives, dear disciples, 
confidence and serving maids of Lord Krishna. O Partha, I speak to you the truth. The gopis are my helpers, teachers, disciples, servants, friends and concerts. I do not know what they are not to me. Text 212. The gopis know Krishna's desires and they know how to render perfect, loving service for his enjoyment. They perform their service expertly for the satisfaction of their beloved. O Partha, the gopis know my greatness, my loving service, respect for me and my mentality. Others cannot really know these. Here we hear from different levels of gopis. Respect for me, we all know some some gopi who is dancing in the rasa dance and try to not step on Krishna's feet. That's not the highest level. There are other levels. Up to Radharani. And that's why in the next text it's written, text 214, among the gopis, Srimati Radhika is the foremost. She surpasses all in beauty, in good qualities, in good fortune, and above all in love. So this shows actually the cleverness of Krishna. He chose to whom he is giving his heart. And of course he is choosing the best. Yes, all others, they also have love from him, of course. But the full heart The whole meditation, in every moment, only one gopi, only Radharani. He cannot hold him back to meditate on the good qualities of Radhika. Also, his mind is streaming towards Radhika all the time, like the stream of the Ganga River. Among the gopis, Srila Prabhupada is writing in his purport, Srimati Radharani is the most exalted. She is the most beautiful, the most qualified, and above all, the greatest lover of Krishna. Just as Rata is dear to Lord Krishna, so her bathing place, Radha Kun, is dear to him. 
She alone is his most beloved of all the gopis. Text 216. Oparta. In all the three planetary systems, in all the three planetary systems, this Earth is especially fortunate for on Earth is the town of Vrindavan. And there the gopis are especially glorious because amongst them is my Srimati Radharani. This verse was spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna. It is cited from the Adi Purana. So Krishna himself is telling this to his dear friend Arjuna. This planet Earth is especially fortunate because there is the town of Brindavan. Especially fortunate. Punyam is now sitting in Vrindavan by the lotus feet of Gurudev. So he is most fortunate. So please bless us that we be also so fortunate. And maybe you send us some speck of the dust of the lotus feet of Gurudev and Radharani. And there the gopis are especially glorious. Why they are glorious? Krishna is saying, because among them is my Srimati Radharani. That's why they are glorious. They could not be glorious without her. Who would show them how to love and serve Krishna? Only she can do that. Two hundred seventeen. All the other gopis help increase the joy of Krishna's pastimes with Radharani. So to make it very clear, Krishna has no interest to enjoy without Radharani. Never. They are just there to increase the pastimes with Radharani. Like if you eat something, you may have different dishes. And in the middle you eat your dish, which is your most wanted. You could eat it every moment in tons, in big amounts. But it's good to have a little things before, some dish before, some after. But in the middle there is the beloved. Your favorite.
And in material world, it may be boring to eat always the same, but in the spiritual sky, it is like you eat it the first time and you are amazed how good it is. It's amazing, astonishing. You are trembling because it's so amazing good and you want to overeat. So the things, the dishes before and the dishes after are nice to make it clear what is the real one. So Krishna wants to play amorous games with Radharani different kinds. That's why different kinds of gopis are needed. Rata is the beloved consort of Krishna and she is the wealth of his life. So, his treasure is Radha, his wealth, nothing else. He's only addicted to Radha. Without her, the gopis cannot give him pleasure. Again, without her, the gopis can not give him pleasure. Text 219. Lord Krishna is the enemy of Kangsa. Left aside the other gopis during the Rasa dance and took Srimati Radharani to his heart. He left aside the other gopis during the Rasa dance and took Srimati Radharani to his heart. For she is the helper of the Lord in realizing the essence of his desires. In other words, without her, he does not understand his own desires. Without Radha, he cannot understand himself. Bhagavad Gita 10.15 Not possible. Text 220, Lord Chaitanya appeared with the sentiment of Radha. He preached the Dharma of this age, the chanting of the holy name and pure love of God. Again, he preached the Dharma of this age, and this is the chanting of the holy name and pure love of God. So the goal is not God. The goal is pure love of God. Who is that? Pure like molten gold. Who is that? Who is shining like that? In 
in the mood of Srimati Radharani, he also fulfilled his own desires. In the mood of Srimati Radharani. So, he is a good disciple. He is taking the mood of his guru. And in this way, he also fulfills his own desires. Only in that mood he can understand how big the love of Radha is for him, unbearable for him, amazing great. This is the principal reason for his appearance. So that's the point, the first point, why he came. Text 222. Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya is Krishna Bachandra Kumar, the embodiment of Rasas. He is a Morris love personified. Again, this is very interesting. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Goshani Vrachendra Kumar Rasamaya Murti Krishna Shakshat Shringa. Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya is Vachendra Kumar. The embodiment of Rasa, he is a Morris love personified. What does this mean? He is actually coming, he is in, inside. But outside he has the complexion of Radharani, he has the mood of Radharani, and on top of this, he is actually surrounded by Radharani. That means actually he is in Raman. And this we can feel. Everybody who is chanting the name of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, immediately I can see wherever I go. Smile is coming, the hands are raising, joy is coming, isn't it? Immediately, when you hear the names of Panchatattva, Nita I go, immediately everyone is getting happy and joy. It's pure rasa. And he's giving us rasa. The Maha Mantra. Maha Mantra. He's giving us the Maharas. But not only that, he's giving us even more. If we are capable to take that, he is giving us the highest, the limit of Brahma Rasa. Unnat Ujjwala Rasa. So 
So this is the very rarely given gift. And we are so lucky that we are on this planet Earth to get this gift right now. It's only 500 years ago, 530 years, something like that. That's nothing. In, if you see in the time, in the real time, this is just a, not even a moment. That's why the vibration is still there. And whoever is in Vrindavan can feel that if he comes to peace of mind for one moment at least then he can feel that the embodiment of rasas here it's written Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya is Rajendra Kumar, the embodiment of Rasas. He is a Morris love personified. Who is that? <laughs> Jai Shri Rati. He made his appearance to taste that conjugal mellow. And incidentally, to broadcast all the rasas, here it's written. He is broadcasting all the rasas, incidentally, just. Because Radharani is with him, otherwise he could not do. Not possible without Radharani. Text 224. My dear friends, just see how Sri Krishna is enjoying the season of spring. My dear friends, just see how Sri Krishna is enjoying the season of spring with the gopis embracing each of his limbs. He is like amorous love personified. With his transcendental pastimes, he enlivens all the gopis and the entire creation. He enlivens all the gopis and the entire creation. With his soft bluish black arms and legs, which resemble blue lotus flowers, he has created a festival of uh, for Cupid. A festival for the God of Love. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Goshani Rasera Sadhana Ashesha Vishesha Kailarasa Ashwadhana Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya is the abode of Rasa. He himself tasted the sweetness of Rasa in endless ways. 
how he could do this if he would be Krishna without Radharani. It's very clear in these sentences here, he cannot be just Krishna. How you can come on this idea that Lord Chaitanya is Krishna? It's not possible how he would taste the sweetness of rasa in endless ways. It's not possible without Radha. Thus, he initiated the Dharma for the age of Kali. The devotees of Lord Chaitanya know all this truth. The devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they know who is in this uh, parampara. They know in the real, in Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. They understand. Advaita Acharya Nityananda Srivas Pandit Gadatha Swarup Damoda Murari Gupta Haridas and all the other devotees of Sri Krishna Chaitanya bowing down with devotion I hold their lotus feet on my head. We have to follow this example. Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is taking the lotus feet of all these persons here Advaita Acharya, Nityananda, Srivas Pandit, Gadatha, Swarupta Muda, Murari Gupta, Haridas, and all other devotees of Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, all other devotees. We can take the dust and hope that they will give us at least one speck of their dust so that we may follow them, that our heart will be able Text 229. I have given a hint of the sixth verse. Now please hear as I reveal the meaning of that original verse. So now it's coming. Desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love. the wonderful qualities in him that she alone relishes through her love and the happiness she feels when she realizes the sweetness of his love the supreme lord hari richly endowed with her emotions appears from the womb of Srimati Sachi Devi as the moon appears from the ocean.
desiring to understand the glory of Radharani's love. He wants to know how she alone relishes his qualities through her love. Qualities of a person can only be relished in loving exchange. Otherwise, not possible, right? You eat with the mouth. The stomach cannot eat without the mouth. You cannot taste qualities of a person without loving exchange. Not possible. That's why Sambanda is the root of all devotion. It's the first thing we have to develop. Sambanda. Exchange of love. It has different forms. It's individual. You cannot see it from outside. But it has to be there. Otherwise, you cannot taste the qualities of a person, right? How we could taste the good qualities of our Gurudev if we would not have our individual Sambandha? Some may have it a little bit more outside from the bodily concept. Some may have it a little bit more inside Guru Manjari. Whatever. It depends where you are. But it's the main point. On this, everything will grow. And we can see, even Krishna cannot understand his own qualities without the loving exchange of Radha. It's such a wonderful, lovely hint to us also. Sometimes we are in fear of relationships because we had so many bad experiences in the material world. But forget about them. On the spiritual platform, no one can ever cut your feelings, really give you some problems. It's not possible. It's only possible on the outer platform. It may influence your relationship, how deep you can go into a spiritual relationship. It may for some time influence, but therefore Gurudev is taking these anatas, these bad impressions, out of the heart that it get clean, cleansed. And then this relationship can go again deep without thinking of bad impressions of the past. So if there are problems in you, just offer them like flowers to Gurudev. Take them and say, anyway, what I have to offer to you, I can just give my anartas. From them I have enough. So please, accept them. I give to you. And in a loving exchange, this is exactly what our Guru Manjari wants from us, what our Radharani wants from us. We call all hindrance in the exchange of love. She wants to take from us, make the way free for deep loving exchange.
because it's the only way of healing and healing means you are coming into your Swarup because if you are not in your Swarup you are actually sick it's the material sickness if you are living in your Swarup then you are healthy because this is just your normal position in the loving exchange with Ladini Shakti. This is our normal position. It's just natural, most natural. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to give us back very easy, not formal. Not with any concept of you have to pay something for it. <laughs> Just for free. And Nita is distributing it on the marketplace. Just free. Take it. If you have a little loba, take it. And Nittai is going so far. You don't have any loba? Oh, I'm sorry. I will give you a little bit from my loba. One drop. It's a start. It's a beginning. And this loba is coming from our Gurudev, Nittai. And Gurudev are connected. Always, in every moment. So take this drop, put it in the heart, and let grow an ocean out of it. By the mercy of Gurudev, this drop will increase. Anyone who has captured Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu in his heart will become blissful by hearing all these transcendental conclusions. All these conclusions are like the newly grown twigs of a mango tree. Newly grown, very fresh, of a mango tree. They are always pleasing to the devotees, who in this way resemble cuckoo birds. Because cuckoo birds, they like these fresh twigs very much. Mm. The camel like non devotees cannot enter into these topics. Therefore, there is special jubilation in my heart. So Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is writing this. The camel like they like to Jew thorns, you know, thorns. They're cutting your tongue and then blood is in your mouth and you are doing this. Then you think, oh, tastes good. Chewing your own blood. 
The camel-like non-devotees cannot enter into these topics. Therefore, there is special jubilation in my heart. Actually, this could have an impression like he's jubilant because they don't understand. How is this? He is not a very lovely person. Yes, he is. He is jubilant because of us. Because in this way he can share. Because the others, they will anyway not understand. So there's no loss. So he can openly share. That's why he's happy. This is the point. Because he wants to share with the people who like mango twigs, fresh mango twigs. So there's no loss. He can openly share because the others will anyway not understand. Therefore, after offering obeisances to the devotees for their satisfaction, I shall speak without hesitating. Jai Ho. We are so lucky that he did that, right? Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Ki Jai. Once Lord Krishna considered within his heart, everyone says that I am complete bliss, full of all rasas. All the world derives pleasure from me. Ama haite anandita hai tribhuvana. Amake ananda dibe ace kon jana. Is there anyone who can give me pleasure? One who has hundred times more qualities than me could give me some pleasure. Ama haite yara hai satta satta guna se jana aladite para mora mana. One who has a hundred times more qualities than me could give pleasure to my mind. Amahaite guni bhada jagat asambhava ekali radhate tata kari anubhava. One more qualified than me is impossible to find in the world. But in radha alone, I feel the presence of one who can give me pleasure. So who can give pleasure to him? <laughs> one person who is very qualified. Well, there's only one. Or maybe some persons who serve that one. They could also indirectly. So if you really want to satisfy Krishna, what is the way? Serve Radha. It's so clear. It's the only way. It's the only way to really satisfy him. 
That's why he's so thankful and he's selling himself to Mandris. They are in fact for him similar to Radha. From them he can learn something because they represent Radha. So all glories to all Mandaris, all glories to all Kinkaris, they are so fortunate. If you want to serve him, serve Radha. Although my beauty defeats the beauty of 10 million cupids, although it is unequaled and unsurpassed, and although it gives pleasure to the three worlds, seeing Radharani gives pleasure to my eyes. Text 244. The vibration of my transcendental flute attracts the three worlds. But my ears are enchanted by the sweet words of Srimati Radharani. Although my body lends fragrance to the entire creation, the scent of Radharani's limbs captivates my mind and heart. Although the entire creation is full of different tastes because of me. I am charmed by the nectarian taste of the lips of Srimati Radhani. And although my touch is cooler than million of moons. I am refreshed by the touch of Srimati Radharani. Thus, although I am the source for the happiness of the entire world, the beauty and attributes of Sri Radhika are my life and soul. In this way, my affectionate feelings for Srimati Radharani may be understood, but on analysis I find them contradictory. My eyes are fully satisfied when I look upon Srimati Radharani. 
but by looking upon me, she becomes even more advanced in satisfaction. What he's saying here? Actually, he's saying, I'm not capable to love like Radharani. Her love is much bigger. I cannot understand. How is it? She is more qualified than me. So if I love her, I should be more satisfied. But I'm not. She is more satisfied in seeing me. How is that? That means her love is bigger. It's amazing. It's astonishing even for Krishna. The flute-like murmur of the bamboos rubbing against one another steals Radharani's consciousness. For she thinks it to be the sound of my flute. And she embraces a tamala tree, mistaking it for me. I have gotten the embrace of Sri Krishna, she thinks. So now my life is fulfilled. Thus, she remains immersed in pleasing Krishna, taking the tree in her arms. When a favorable breeze carries to her the fragrance of my body, she is blinded by love and tries to fly into that breeze. When she tastes the battle chewed by me, she merges in an ocean of joy and forgets everything else. Even with hundreds of mouth, I could not express the transcendental pleasure she derives from my association. Seeing the luster of her complexion after our pastimes together, I forget my own identity in happiness. I forget my own identity in happiness. By looking at her after the pastime. He cannot express his feelings, his thankfulness. He cannot express. It's not possible for him. Even with millions of mouth, not possible. The sage Bharata has said that the mellows of lover and beloved are equal. But he does not know the mellows of my Bandavan. In other words, he doesn't know what he's talking about. 
not in the case of Brindavan. The happiness I feel when meeting Radharani is a hundred times greater than the happiness I get from meeting others. The happiness I feel when I meet Radharani is a hundred times greater than the happiness I get from meeting others. My dear, auspicious Radharani, your body is the source of all beauty. Your red lips are softer than the scents of immortal sweetness. Your face bears the aroma of a lotus flower. Your sweet words defeat the vibrations of the cuckoo. And your limbs are cooler than the pulp of sandalwood. All my transcendental senses are overwhelmed in ecstatic pleasure by tasting you, who are completely decorated by beautiful qualities. This verse was spoken by Lord Krishna to Radha. It is recorded in the Lalita Mahadava 9.9 .9 of Srila Rupa Goswami. Her eyes are enchanted by the beauty of Lord Krishna. Her body trills in pleasure at his touch. Her ears are always attracted to his sweet voice. Her nostrils are enchanted by his fragrance. And her tangu hangers for the nectar of his soft lips. She hangs down her lotus-like face, exercising self-control only by pretense. But she cannot help showing the external signs of her spontaneous love for Lord Krishna. Who has the eyes to see, he will see. Considering this, I can understand that some unknown mellow in me controls the entire existence of my captivator. Srimati Radharani Is this a love letter? I think I never read such a wonderful love letter. So many statements. How Krishna 
has given his heart to Radha, to Radha, to Radha alone. I am always eager to taste the joy that Radharani derives from me. And this shows also another attribute of Krishna. He is thankful for this love. He is not like, for example, me here in this world. Somebody loves you, but you cannot really feel it. You are not thankful. You are not really, you know, you cannot reciprocate in the right way. But he is so thankful. He is aware that he cannot pay back anything. He is aware that he will be not able to pay back anything. He is even telling this to the gopis, what to speak of Radha. As enjoyer, you can only enjoy if you are really aware what you have, right? If you are not aware, you are not enjoyer. I have appeared in this world to taste mellows. I shall taste the mellows of pure love in various ways. I shall teach devotional service which springs from the spontaneous love of the devotees by demonstrating it myself with my pastimes. I shall teach devotional service which springs from the spontaneous love of the devotees by demonstrating it myself with my pastimes. This is what Lord Chaitanya did, right? He was in Manjari Bhav. He was showing us practically what it means. He was sharing it with us, the highest possible taste of love, sharing with the most fallen jivas. This is the highest contrast in Kali Yuga, where the jivas are most fallen, most rotten. The highest love is freely distributed. We may say it's a contradiction, but actually not. The more fallen a person is, the more pure love is needed to help him. Isn't it? Sri Radha understands. Krishna could not understand when he was here. He was asking for qualification. But Radharani is not asking for any qualification. She knows most rotten souls need the most pure love. No other way to help. So 
So he's coming to the conclusion, unless I accept the luster of the ecstatic love of Sri Radhika, these three desires cannot be fulfilled. Therefore, assuming Radharani's sentiments and bodily complexion, I shall descend to fulfill these three desires. In this way, Lord Krishna came to a decision. Simultaneously, the time came for the incarnation of the age. As the time, at that time, Sri Advaita was earnestly worshipping him. Advaita attracted him with his loud calls. And so he appeared. First, Lord Krishna made his parents and elders appear, then Krishna himself with the sentiments and complexion of Radhika appeared in Navadvip, like the full moon from the womb of Mother Sachi, which is like an ocean of pure milk. Meditating on the lotus feet of Sri Rupa Goswami, I have thus explained the sixth verse. I can support the explanation of these two verses, verse 5 and 6, with Srila Rupa Goswami's verse, text 275. Lord Krishna desired to taste the limitless nectarian mellows of the love of one of his multitude of loving themselves, namely Sri Radha. And so he has assumed the form of Lord Chaitanya. He has tasted that love while hiding his own dark complexion with her effulgent yellow or golden color. May that Lord Chaitanya confer upon us his grace. Thus the auspicious invocation the essential nature of the truth of Lord Chaitanya and the need for his appearance have been set forth in six verses. Braying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I Krishna Das, Narad, Sri Chaitanya Charit, Amrita, following in their footsteps. This is the end of the fourth chapter. So we have heard why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And this is already not only melting the heart, it's like Radharani, her body is melting completely out of compassion. I feel the same.
So this love is distributed. Wonder. I never listen what you are telling. Wow. Create you your words are one. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Dev, for your mercy. Very, very good. Thank you all who is listening and getting benefit of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How it is merciful that we can develop our fish nature in Manjuri Sar. This grace, this grace can show us our life can change so good. Thank you, Lord. I'm waiting for one week to listen from Radha Radha. Radha Radha Guru Dev. Radha Radha. Every day is Sunday, but Monday is a special Sunday now. Because I can read, I can read for you. That's very special. You are reading for all the devotees and for our fixing our soul bodies. Mother, you have. But Mahaprabhu, Urna Puja, Rasa, going to us. Bhav Lasati, that is Mother, you have. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of all of you who is taking out some time in Monday also for listening and realizing how the Krishna is vanishing love of Pradharam. Yeah. This is the highest slide, yeah. I feel that Sri Chaitanya Charit Amrita is actually really showing the the character of Krishna. Because it's from the view of Radharani. Only this few can show who he is actually, how he feels. Then more clear to understand Prabhupada Bhagavad Gita. When I listen to Anandas Bhavari, then my desire comes to listen to Chaitanya Chaitamrit. When I listen to Chaitanya Chaitamrit, then more details start coming. Bhagavad Gita to see again. Uh, somebody also wanted to share 
Thank you, Garavani, for this nice sharing of nectarian sharing to Danish. <clears throat> Thank you all that you are actually, you think you are listening, but actually I am listening and I'm just sharing what I'm listening in this moment. So I'm so thankful that without you, actually, this flow could not be there, right? So it's very important that there are listeners who want to hear otherwise. Uh, there's no use of reading or sharing. So thank you very much that you bless me to share that Gurudev is giving me this chance and you are giving this chance. Jai Shri Rade. Rade, Rade, thank you so much. Jai Shri Rade. Rade, Rade, thank you. Jai Shri Rade. The loving Japanese devotees, they are always so sweet. I think you have a part of the nature of Radharani melting the hearts of others. Thank you, Garavani. Thank you. Very, very thank you. The most steady Italian Rasa Dasi, the Manjari, who is always there. Thank you. Because of such persons, we want to share all together. But also we want to hear you because I know you're always there and you listen. I understand that you have big feelings inside, but you never share them with us. Maybe you are so kind one day and give us a little of these feelings also. I would really like that. I can just feel you and it's so lovely. Yeah, uh, uh, the only thing that I can understand is uh, to be here is the best way that I can do. This is my best time in all my life. And I'm very grateful to you, to Guru Dev, and such uh, beautiful devotees, they, all of you give us so much. So what can I say? Only thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Guravani. Hey, Radhe Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Bendidas, how are you? <laughs> I, <can. laughs> I want to say just that uh, during the hearing, uh, actually, I realized that Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Chaitanya Charitamrita actually are all glorification of Shimati Radharani. 
And the Sankirtan movement is also glorification of uh, Shimati Radharani, internally and externally. And uh, it is such an amazing thing. Be before I was reading Chaitanya Charitamrita in the past time also, and this first part was really, really uh, uh, philosophical, a little bit not tasteful for me. So I, I, I get immediately to the, to the Leela. And this Leela satisfies me in, in such some kind. But today, first time I was tasted fully, even this part is amazing. It's the same book, in the, but completely another, another feeling and incredible, really. And I'm very thankful to you also for that. I'm also very thankful because this is only the Kripa of our, devo uh, of our devotees, our Gurudev, and all the lion actually. And if we pray to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he will actually reveal to us the feelings. Not understanding, feel it. Because Chaitanya Charat Amrita, you can only feel and not understand. <clears throat> Thank you very much for listening and sharing your feelings. Jai Radhe. Jai Shri Radhe. Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev. Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya. Jai Nityananda. Jaya Dvaita Chantra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. All devotees of Gora, and they are still here. It's not the past, <laughs> it's now. And if we listen together, they are all here. Can't we feel it now? It's not past, it's now. This is through your mercy. Because you all want to hear, you all want to listen. Thank you, Guravani, and everybody for sharing your love. Thank you so much. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, my yoga shakti. <laughs> and Shruti is always hiding, but he loves listening. Ah. Always listening. <laughs> hiding. <laughs> <But> hiding. <laughs> and he loves your sharing also really much. <laughs> <laughs> but we can see him in the back. He's not really <laughs> hidden. No, he's a cook in our family, so <laughs> he's yes. always running in the kitchen. <laughs> That's perfect. Hearing Chaitanya Charit uh, Amrita and cook it in. Yes. Yeah, we prepared perfect. today lasagna for Radha and Krishna and beautiful vegetarian lasagna. So it will be, uh, wow. yeah, and we, and we were listening together to your class. It was like, wow. <laughs> So thank you so much. So if Mohan will eat this, he will fall down unconscious. <laughs> By your words, the words no, no, no. are in, because of the in, description, <laughs> the description of Radharani. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Radhe Radhe. So have a nice time and if you may have questions, you can also write them down and you can interrupt me anytime. I'm so proud, I'm just reading all the time and you know, so please interrupt my ego and give me some, yeah, some hint and ask questions or share your feelings. It makes it much more tasteful. So. See you next special Sunday on Monday. <laughs> okay.
राधे 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 bliss which is flowing out of you you can see this must be chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy yeah that's mercy over there and this beautiful sangha yeah, it's I, I very, it's always when i impossible to listen this neck <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> I hope that we meet again somewhere in Vrindavan. Or yes, in August we will be there. In August, in August will come my our second daughter with family. So end of August yeah. till September, beginning of September we will be there. So yeah. maybe? Yeah. Like rather than slow to speed. You will anyway yeah. see us in Vrindavan all the time. Depends. Yeah. Outer surface or... Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your love. Jai Sri Radhe. Do you know the Vrindavans actually here? They are hiding also. This family. The boy. Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Ah, here they are, you see? <laughs> yes. They are, they are called Vrindavans because actually their, their name was Hamburgs. Hamburg? Mario, Hamburg, yes, yes. so on, Hamburg. But now they are known as Brindavans, not anymore as Hamburgs. You may consider why. Why? So, Gurudev's mercy, <laughs> uh, Radharani's mercy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They are such a lovely family. I have to really share this with you. They are such, I know many families with children, but actually they are so a lovely family. It's so rare in this time. They are really, they have such a lovely exchange in the family. It's really, and they are with Nitai and Gauranga, Chota, small ones, but only the outer form is small. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. To bring so much love in our house, in our family. <laughs> Chaitanya Charit Amrita with the love letters from Krishna to Ratarani. <laughs> Letting <laughs> our hearts, yes. Thank you for sharing. Thank you all. Our life is so fulfilled with all of your love, actually. We are carried by this love. And Gurudev is the source here on this <coughs> platform. <coughs> And Radharani is the ultimate source, even for Krishna. Jai Shri Radhe. So, thank you very much and see you soon. Radhe Radhe. Thank you.